Okay, now, I want you to meet a young lady making her very first appearance. Carol Siskind is here tonight. She is um, from New York, works at the Improv back here and uh, out here in Hollywood. And this is her very first appearance on network television. Would you welcome Carol Siskind. Carol? <laughs> Wonderful to be here, and yes, I am from New York. And oh, great! But I am celebrating my second year living in California this week, and that's very exciting for me. So we've got both coasts covered, don't we? I should really go home and see my family, but uh, somehow the trip just isn't worth it. <laughs> no, I mean the traveling. You know, well, first of all, you get on a plane, you know there's going to be this obnoxious person sitting next to you talking nonstop throughout the entire flight. I'm that person. <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't help it. The seatbelt light goes on. I look at the guy next to me, I go, hi. <laughs> Don't even think of renting a headset. <laughs> You're mine for five hours, babe. <laughs> I talked to one man so much he has to change his seat. This was really embarrassing to watch the guy stuff himself into the overhead bin. <laughs> Something happens when they pressurize the cabin. It just condenses all those stupid, boring, meaningless details of my life into a story I find almost fascinating. <laughs> I wish I feel compelled to tell people I hope I will never see again. <laughs> it's like, no wonder I'm afraid of flying. I don't have morbid thoughts about a crash. I'm just afraid we'll land before I finish. <laughs> you know what I miss most about the East Coast? You're gonna think I'm crazy. I miss the winter. I do, I know. Well, well the thing is, when I say winter, I'm talking about ski trips, bonfires, cuddling up at night. I'm talking about someone else's life. <laughs> I don't do any of these things. I sit home and wonder where dust comes from. <laughs> I live alone. I'm such a slob. I am. I live with those dust balls in the kitchen grow four months. I wanted to see how big it would get. <laughs> it's going to UCLA now. I'm very proud. <laughs> Actually, my apartment was robbed in New York. I don't know if you've ever come home and found your place ransacked, but what a shock. It looks so much better. <laughs> No matter where you live, you have to have an answering machine. They are the best, aren't they? You can leave your house for the entire day, come home and find out no one is thinking of you. <laughs> no one is thinking of me socially. I'm in such a slump right now. I'm between fantasies. <laughs> Thank God I have an imagination. Saves my life. It does. I fell in love today. Three blocks away, I see someone so nice. In my mind, I meet him. I move in with him. I buy a blender. <laughs> By the time I pass them on the street, I'm going, I want my records back, okay, Pat? <laughs> you know what I want? I want to fall in love again. That's all I want. Just to meet someone special, someone I could take for granted. <laughs> someone I could look at in the morning and say, you're not what I had in mind. <laughs> I lasted three years with one person. The worst relationship. I'm talking about one of those love-hate things. We both loved him and hated me. <laughs> I know. I was much too jealous. I admit it now. If he looked at another woman, I'd cry. This paid off. He left me for a man. Not really. He's with another woman now, okay? And I ran into both of them on the street together. This is pretty disgusting. Although, I must say, I was proud of the way I handled myself. I was very polite. It was the vomiting I couldn't control. <laughs> I don't know what happened. The beginning was great. But it always is, isn't it? The beginning, when everything he does is sexy, everything she does is adorable. Then you wait, and after all those cute little things the other person does, become obnoxious. <laughs> like the way they breathe. <laughs> the fact they're breathing at all. <laughs> Women are incredible guys, we remember the beginning. We do remember everything anyway, don't we, gals? Yeah. We do. Absolutely, and men know it too. You're in trouble from day one with us. <laughs> we would have met you 20 years ago. Today we'd remember where we met you, what you were wearing, what you said, and how much we weighed. <laughs> I'm amazed men and women ever get together. I don't think men understand us. Really, first of all, everyone's gay now. 
The 80s, everyone's gay. I don't care. I just wish the men who really hate women would stop giving me haircuts. <laughs> and it's not a gay issue. I have a lot of friends who are gay. One of them, I can't believe, called me, told me he wanted to go straight. Then he said, do you know any straight men I could go out with? <laughs> Men don't understand women, I know that. I hear from a guy, everything I'm seeing anymore calls me out of the blue, and then he says, it's only been two weeks. And I'm thinking, two weeks? Do you know what that is in girl years? <laughs> it took me six, seven, eight, nine years on But women don't understand women either. My best girlfriend only calls me when she's depressed. You must know people like this, right? I'm on the phone with her three hours. It's a waste of time. She never listens to my advice. She will not jump. Thanks very much. Carol's just gonna move it back in a minute. We'll be back.